Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week by TheBimGuys.com. You can check us out on the web at TheBimGuys.com. Today, we're going to go ahead and discuss how to clean up corners in Revit and also even add peers. So we're going to take a look at some of the ways to clean things up, and then we'll go ahead and uh, deal with the peers here. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, you'll notice in here I have um, a peer that comes up a certain distance, steps back, and then the regular wall continues up. Now, before we get started, let me explain what I have set up, just so you uh, it clarifies it for some people. I'm going to go to, let's say, my south elevation, and I want you to notice that the levels are set at the 1 is at 0, level 2 is at 5, and roof is at 10. These are compressed just so it's easy to see what's happening on the screen. So if they, if they look a little weird, it's because I've compressed the levels. Okay, so we want to create this scenario. So how, is, how can we do that quickly and easily in Revit? Now, we can do it quickly by actually grabbing two walls, and we could adjust these walls, right? We can go here, hit Edit Type, and create a wall type that has a thicker air gap. Now, when I change the thicker air gap, you'll see the walls get thicker. Now, if I go to Level 1, you'll notice that I'm getting that thicker air gap. But how do I create the pier? So I'm going to do it actually from 3D. You don't have to do it this way, but it'll explain what's happening. So I have two wall types, and I just want to stack them. I can grab this wall type here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down. Instead of going up to the roof, I say go up to level 2, and you'll see there we go. Uh, the next thing we can do is we can take these two walls and then go ahead and copy them up. So I'll hit copy the clipboard here, and I'll hit paste align to selected levels. And I'll place them on level 2, and you'll see how they sit up top. Then I'll change them back to what they were before, and you'll see how it creates that pier. Now, you can also use a stacked wall. Stacked walls would also work fine in this scenario, but some people don't like stacked walls because of their personalities, and that's fine. But you can uh, stack the walls like so, and you should be good to go. Um, I'm going to nudge that wall over, and you'll notice how Revit has a tendency to create that relationship between the two. So you'll see the walls are actually aligning there. Now, some of the other things you may notice is, being that we move this wall up, the the relationship of the patterns did not match up. So we'll also talk about that. That'll be a little bonus tip here. You'll see how the patterns don't line up. In Revit, you can align patterns. Just use your align line command. Go ahead and hit tab a few times and pick a vertical, and then come over here, tab, 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 and pick a vertical. Then go ahead, tab, 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 pick a horizontal, then tab, 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 pick a horizontal. You don't have to pick the exact one. As long as the two match, it is a pattern. So it will match itself up. So you'll notice how nice that looks. So just wanted to throw that out there. Now, we've got that peer scenario. Let's see how it looks in um, here. Now, I'm in uh, plan view, and you see the peer is kind of a little wonky here. You may want that brick to come back. So I'm going to grab this wall here, and I'm going to hit edit type. And I want you to notice I've even turned on wrap. OK, see wrap at ends. I'll even say rapid inserts, and I'll say, let's see the exterior material. When I hit OK, again, still we don't get a clean result there. So what's some other options that we can use? We'll take a look at that now. So option number two, we'll go up to architecture here. We'll start the wall command, and we have a wall type in here called brick. You may have seen it there. It's been there forever. You pick the brick. Now I'm going to tell the brick, finish face interior, and I'm going to start at the corner here, and I'm going to draw up a certain distance, maybe 3 foot or 2 8. There we go. Whoop. Trying to get in all nice and pretty there. It does want to do 2-8. Okay, there we go. Now, I may come from this one over here, and I may, again, go 2-8. The, the numbers don't matter. You do what you want to do. Now, I've created both uh, that wall. Now, let's go look at it in 3D. You'll see how I have my second wall going up, and it forms that pier in 3D. Looks good, right? And isometric, perspective. But let's see how it looks in plan. It doesn't look the way we'd like it to look. So we're going to go ahead, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. I'm going to use the uh, join command. So let's go back to modify, join, and I'm going to join these wall types, 1 and 2, and 1 and 2, 1 and 2. And you see how it looks pretty dang good. Now, that's because I've adjusted this wall a little bit. I'm going to talk about that now. Let me drag this wall out a bit, and you'll notice how the, the wall cleanup here is it's it follows more typical construction. You'll see how we get these butt joints as we go. If this was a metal stud, we'd stop the metal stud here, and then we'd turn and start the metal stud. We'd start, stop the sheathing and start the sheathing again. We would not typically cut the sheathing at a 45. We'd butt join everything. So 
when you create create an object like this, I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. I'm gonna create, let's go up top, use create similar, one of my favorite commands. And I'm just gonna wrap this edge again. I'm not gonna worry about the distances this time. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in. Now, when I go to use this little tool, join, you're gonna notice that it doesn't clean up the way it did in the previous. And you'll say, how did he do that? Ah. See, I get this little extraneous line. What's happening is the cleanup here, you see that's one wall, and the cleanup here, that's that wall. So what's happening is we get kind of a weird result. Now you can hit join again and join this wall and this wall, and that will clean it up. So you're like, whoa, okay, it just takes an extra uh, click to make that happen. But if for some reason um, it's not working, you can also use a tool up top here, and it is called wall cleanups or wall joins. You choose this, and then when you pick the elements, not the smaller, but the larger, uh, you can see how Revit is showing the relationship of all the materials. If I start hitting next, see how it walks through the different relationships. You can do miter, and then you can square off. So lots of different things here to help you clean these things up. So I'm going to go next, set it back there, hit escape, and there we go. So notice that cleans up quite nicely also. Um, but you'll notice that the brick is actually thickening here. So what if, let's say, we don't want the brick to thicken. Let's take a look at another option. Uh, option number three here, well, we actually have four. Because you can use a stack wall or hand stack them, you can um, then create multiple walls and, in essence, glue them together or join them. And the last one here I'm going to show you is using what's called an architectural column. And we're going to finesse it a bit. If I take the architectural column, which is right here, not structural column, this is structural, it can, you can, it can be load bearing. You can run actually, actually export and run load calculations and all this stuff on it. But then you have one called an architectural wrap. This is pretty much either a fiberglass, gyp, whatever wrap. It has no structural aspects to it, but it is a very powerful tool. So I'm going to fire this up. So what does it do? I'm going to go here to the rectangular one that comes with Revit. When you take this rectangular element and you put it out in space, it just represents a 24 by 24 or 18 by 18 column. When you touch an object like this wall, notice what it does. It actually wraps materials. Now, let me go ahead and go to thin line right here. I'll ping it a couple of times. And notice how the thin, the interior material followed it around like so. Now it was pretty slick. What happens if we hit it on the outside? I'll pop it maybe right here. Notice how Revit wraps it. Now, if you touch right here, again, see it's wrapping different ways. But if we think about this, we don't want the metal stud to come all the way out. What we want to do is we just want the brick material to follow. Now, these elements are pretty slick, as you can see. Now, I can change the size of these also. You'll see in Revit, there's also an 18 by 24. So you can choose the shape you want and then apply it. Now, the, the problem is you'll start to notice that the metal stud is going out to that location. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe it's not. So how can I adjust this to make it clean up where it just adjust just adjust the uh, the brick okay so let's take a look now I'm gonna grab the wall now you may have been in walls before and you poked around and edited them and you've seen this thing uh, they, there's a green line in here it's hard to see on the screen here's another little tip if you want to see the green line go back to regular line weight and then go back to your wall type uh, you'll see it notice these lines are also thick so visually it makes it easy to see on the screen next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and you'll notice on the inside gyp side how it wrapped and notice where that green line is. That green line is what they call a core boundary. That core boundary can be adjusted. Now, typically the core boundary, when Revit comes out and you're putting the floor in, it'll jump to that location or a roof, it'll jump to that location. But that core boundary also works with these columns. So you can finesse this line. Now, again, if you're working with a team of people, you may want to say, hey, I'm finessing this line because I want my columns to clean up. That way, someone putting in the floors understands that those are happening. Now, I'm going to take this core boundary, number five, and I'm going to move it upwards. And I'm going to go right here uh, to, let's say, so the thermal barrier and the finish will accommodate. It will follow the column, and these will remain straight. Let's see what happens there. It's not going to be the final answer, but let's go ahead and hit OK. I uh, hit OK again. Boom. Notice how what we have going on. So we have the brick material following the column, the airspace following the column, okay, as it goes around. So you're thinking to yourself, I don't want the airspace to follow the column. Well, we don't. Let's go back and we'll say, edit the type, and we'll say, you know what? 
move that core boundary up one more. Up, up, up. There we go. We hit OK on that. We hit OK. Bam. Notice what has happened now. We have our brick veneer going around, and it's kind of following its own little happy world. And then we have the metal stud sheathing, etc. That is running a straight shot. Let's look at it in 3D. Now, these elements can be adjusted. I could grab this and drop it down. Remember, we have the roof level. I'll say go up to level two, and I'll do it for the rest of them also. There we go. All right, now, let's throw in a bonus, a bonus tip here. You can see how nice that worked out. I'm going to hover over this wall. I'm going to tab it, grab it, move it up, copy. I'm going to move it up a bit. This one here is, what if I want a custom pier? Well, you can take this element. This is a rectangular column. It is a family. Notice it's a family. You can edit that family. You can tweak the shape of that family. So I go to my floor plans, go all the way down. You can tweak this family to be whatever you want. All right, I'm going to close that, close that, and let's go back. Now, I've already created one, and that'll be for maybe another video. But I'm going to go up top to, again, architecture, not structural column, but architectural column. I'll drop this down, and you'll see I have a couple of L-shaped columns in here. So I'm going to take this one. It's 24, 24 by 8, and I bring it in. Notice the shape of it. It is not just a rectangular shape. It is actually an L shape. Now, when I bring it in here and I click it, you'll see how it instantly cleans that corner up. So that was pretty slick. Now, being it's a family, it can stand alone. I can also grab it, edit type, duplicate it. Again, just like any old Revit family here, right? So I'll say, let's say 48. Let me go ahead and type that in. 48 inches by 48 inches by, let's say in this instance, we only want it uh, maybe four inches deep. There we go. We then change the numbers appropriately, just like you would anything else. So you can customize these. That's all I did. I just built a custom one. When I hit OK on that, there's the shape. So now to move these things around, I'll go ahead and drag this out. I can grab this element here. I'll create similar. Or just copy, old copy command. Copy it maybe from that corner to that corner right there. Notice how I cleaned it up. So uh, quite a nice little tool. Now, if you are getting that little fragment again, remember there's a couple of ways to do it. You can use the cleanup, or in this instance, I'm going to go up top, modify, and I'm going to say, hey, Revit, on these cleanups, I'm going to pick that corner, and I'm going to say miter it. By mitering it, what it does, you'll see it cleans up the materials beautifully. Let's check it out in 3D. So here's our, our piers. Now, and if I was doing a large building with lots of these, this would probably be my choice because you can see how quickly and efficiently I can move these around a building and do what I need to do. So there you go. Tip of the week. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, if you have any questions or comments, check us out on the web at thebimguys.com.